first fire at sea. I'm doing turnover in the radio room, which is the room behind where you see me standing in the doorway. When my supervisor yelled fire, the guy steering the ship literally reached back and closed the door, locking us in with the fire. The room isn't big enough for more than two people. So I'm locked up, close and personal, in a radio room with an electrical and paper fire. And um, the other thing, when that door closes, the lights went out. Vulcan's David Swan is one of a different breed of Canadian soldier. He served most of his military service in the Canadian forces, first in the Navy and later in Army intelligence during peacetime. Swan comes from a military family with both grandfathers serving in either World War I or World War II. His father was also in the Army and spent some time in Israel, where Dave got his first taste of military life. He joined the forces in 1976, when it was one of the least popular things a young man could do. He says the public perception of Canadian soldiers has changed drastically in the over 30 years he spent in the forces. Today, Canadians are much more willing to acknowledge those in uniform as heroes. Back in the 1970s, 80s, and into the 1990s, that wasn't always the case. We like to say today we love our military. When my dad returned from the Middle East, there was no reception. There was no welcome home. There was no thank you. And I, when I signed on, I was aware of that. I, what I didn't understand was how it was going to impact me. Um, being harassed in school because I was wearing my uniform, um, <laughs> If anything, it anchored me in what I was doing in the military because I thought of it as service and important. Most people who served through that, that era and had to spend time in public have a story about being spat upon. Um, not just Ottawa. Um, I won't say coast to coast. Alberta in particular and, and Western Canada has a wonderful and different attitude than, than Eastern Canada. But it was a hard time. Swan says the perception that the Canadian military wasn't tested or confronted before Afghanistan isn't true. Swan says he fought in four wars, two of them relatively unknown to Canadians today, the Cold War and the War on Drugs. He says his first encounter with what was then the Soviet Union brought some very quick understanding. I was second in command, uh, my first uh, kick at that cat. Uh, the ship was HMCS Port St. Jean. It's called the Fall Great Lakes Cruise, where we take the ship to different cities along the Great Lakes so the local naval reserves can come down and train on the ship for a weekend or a week or whatever time they can get off. So we're the delivery crew. There are no guns on board, not even a flare pistol. Okay, we are unarmed. Um, what we don't know as we approach the St. Lawrence River is that there are five Soviet grain ships loading up. They're brand new. They're loading with grain at Sorel in Quebec, where the river's relatively narrow, and um, they're hauling this grain to feed Russians, because Russia doesn't have any of its own grain. Well, we're in what's called the Richelieu Rapids. It's it's a narrow place. The water's moving fast. <laughs> you mess up with your navigation or how you steer the ship, and you're on the rocks, and it's a really bad hair day anyways. We had the first of the five ships cross what on land would be the dotted line on the highway. And we're 125 feet long, 500 tons, um, and it missed us by about 75 feet. So essentially, the Cold War was not so cold. Oh, very much so. Um, and, and I only know the naval side firsthand. Um, I've got stories that friends of mine went, in, went through. Um, the naval side was bad enough. I, I now, since, uh, since I joined the Army and having met people later in life, they've got bullet holes in them from stuff that went on in the ice trying to keep the Russians away from Canadian Forces Station Alert, which is on land on, I think, Ellesmere Island, northern tip of Canada. Um, not cold. Multiple times in the winter, uh, there was an army unit. Uh, for a while, it was the 2nd Battalion Royal Canadian Regiment out of Gagetown that had a group of soldiers that were always set aside. They were the quick response force that got into a Hercules aircraft, flew to alert, ran out to say, hi, welcome to Canada, go home. Um, and um, 
Yeah, met a, knew a couple of them fairly well, and one of them had a very interesting bullet hole through his shoulder from an on-ice engagement. Swan says it's tough going to certain legions or meeting with some other veterans who served in either of the World Wars or in Korea. He says soldiers of his generation aren't looked upon with the same respect and admiration by either the public or other veterans, and he says that's wrong. One of the phrases I've heard out of Kipling is anybody who's seen the elephant. Operators have seen the elephant. You get people who've gone through their career and done nothing and never never sort of had that live, hot, <gasps> I could die experience. Um, okay, it, it happens. There are those guys, and I've, I've met those guys. Um, but there's a whole culture and thousands and thousands of Canadian, in my book, veterans who didn't serve in an official war, who saw the elephant, who lived that operational experience, who are every bit the veteran of World War One, World War Two, Korea. And I, you know, I look back, to, you know, to you guys who were who were in the military in that that seventies, eighties, into the early nineties, and you've got to be able to hold your head up high, as far as I'm concerned. Um, that's but that's my opinion, but. We do with with a certain amount of attitude. And part of the attitude is, excuse me, where were you when I came home? If my dad had had a veteran to talk to when he came home from Israel, that probably would have taken a lot of the stress, um, to be blunt, the post-traumatic stress disorder, the PTSD, out of the rest of his life. If somebody had said, welcome home, how'd the tour go? did not happen did not happen um, if someone had talked to the sailors after a bad operational tour uh, bad search and rescues if somebody had opened the doors in the mess and said welcome where were you what's going on it, w- it would have been a revolutionary change we would have uh, revolutionary in the sense that we would have been in- integrated into a bigger slice of society instead of a little club, a little clique with a group of stories that were never told. So, if you go to the Legion today, yep. and and you meet up with guys from the Second World War of Korea, yep. um, how do you think you fit in with them? I don't. Why? Uh, actually, I, I, I need to correct that. In some legions, I fit, and, and they are wonderful hosts, and they'll say, what, what have you done? Where did you serve? Great folks. For at least half the legions I've been exposed to, they want to talk their stories. They don't want to listen. They don't want to receive. They, I did my part. You need to hear them from me. So essentially, it's hard for you or for them to find common ground. I get their stories. Two grandfathers. It's in my DNA. I know where they come from. I have a world of respect for going to war. That wasn't the end of wars. That wasn't the end of hardship service. That wasn't the end of atrocities. Um, I had a veteran say, you haven't seen what I have seen. And I looked at him and said, you haven't seen the body count out of the Swiss air crash. And he went, what? I had a day when my job was to process the garbage bags full of body parts brought in by 13 boats. I don't ever need to see a a Stephen King story or a horror movie for the rest of my life. Been there, done that, and it caused me nightmares for a long time. I don't need a lecture about what I saw or didn't see. That's my experience, but a lot of a lot of peacetime Canadian servicemen have been shot at, done the search and rescues, recovered the bodies. They've been in they need to be remembered. They've been in close proximity to all the horrors of war and all the horrors that that service can bring. And for the most part it's not recognized.